been very exciting. And what to call a Nigerian politics should be started from Lagos. I talk of the area Mosa or what is it, how do they call them there? They, 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 they had the foundation, the politics of Nigeria started from Lagos. The NCNC, the A National mm -hmm. they were they were all here. And that um, so now say that they don't belong to anybody. The people felt the separate and our forefathers have been are claiming that Lagos should have his own state. Say. So that's why the politics of the country, they had no say. The only say they had was the city council, and I think it's only one council of representing the state, well, not the state, the area of territory in the National Assembly. So they felt that the Lagos had no voice in the making of their country. So that's why Lagos State was created. At the creation of Lagos State on 27th May 1967, the state was green with great potentials, and what she needed was a diligent, committed, and an inspirational leader who will galvanize the abundant human and material resources to leapfrog her development. This huge responsibility fell on Mobolaji Olufunsho Johnson. Up till the time the state was created, the young and vibrant officer was the military administrator of Lagos Federal Capital Territory. After the creation, Mobolaji Johnson not only became the military governor of Lagos State, he was able to assemble a sound team of technocrats who devoted themselves to building the state. The initial team, or the four musketeers comprising A.E. Housing Wright, the secretary to the military government, F.C.O. Koka, the finance secretary, M.I.O. Agoro, the legal secretary, and J.O. Adeyemi Biro, the principal secretary, were later joined by other appointees, and together they built the structures and systems for governing the state. With just £10,000 a stake of grant, Mobolaji Johnson adopted fiscal discipline as the cornerstone of the administration. Along with his team, they worked to lay the foundation of a prosperous Lagos. Attention was given to infrastructural development and provision of services that ensured a fast and robust development. Let me only focus on the fact that here was a man, a quintessential officer, a first class administrator, and above all, he maintained the dignity of both himself and the dignity of the aspirations of the people. Armed with the vision to integrate all constituent parts of the state by road, the regime conceived the articulated transportation mode. This led to the design and implementation of a strategic ring road project to connect Ekpe to Badagri via Ikorodu and Ikeja. Okay. It's a pity. Those of us that were moved to him, he was very close to us. And at the same time, he taught us what a soldier should look like and is to be. We learned a lot of him for him. One thing we gathered more for him is his simplicity in dinner works. Highlights of this massive project are the construction of Itoikin Bridge, upgrading and expansion of Ikurudu Road, and partial implementation of the first, second, and third mainland roads, including Apapa Ikeja Expressway. The regime kicked off the construction of Kata, Eko, and third mainland bridges before the projects were taken over 
by the federal government. I came across uh, General 101 when I was serving as a battalion commander in Nebogo. I was then a lieutenant colonel. I think he came for a golf engagement then. And uh, in the reception that accompanied the competition, I was so marveled, so amused to see the kind of uh, humility that was being exhibited by this gentleman officer. I was compelled that day to offer a prayer to my God that he should please, in his infinite masses, grant me a restful, peaceful retirement like he did for Mobolaji Johnson. And I think I must make it known that the Lord answered my prayer. I want to submit that there's nothing else we can do than to honor an untainted soldier, an untainted governor, and an untainted player in the corporate world. The biggest of them was the transformation and upgrading of the 60.7-kilometer lagos Badagri Expressway from a single to a dual carriageway. Constructed between 1972 and 1974, the road, a masterpiece at the time, effectively linked Nigeria with the neighboring countries of Bene, Togo, and Ghana. Mobolaji Johnson's government also constructed Faloma Bridge to ease traffic around Ikoyi, opened the city hall in 1968, and established the Central Tenders Board, CTB, which deliberated on matters of contract awards. As the enabler of development, the focus on infrastructural development played significant roles in accelerating the growth of the state. It also ensured conducive environment for the economy to thrive. Lagos has uh, done more than ambition in some respect, but we have vision all the same because we believe that Lagos will thrive as a state. You know, the revenue of Lagos states at that was three million pounds. The hope that it will remain the heart of the body, the heart of Nigeria, the best states that have been laid down by all the people who made Lagos society, especially political society. So Lagos remains a cosmopolitan uh, uh, entity. With people from different parts of Lagos forming its citizenry, but never forgetting those who have no other place to go back to. Those are the indigenous Lagosians, those who's, uh, who lost their ancestry. Some who have found there their worries who are indigenous, very indigenous to Lagos. Some of them are still in the state, as you know, in the area. Then waves of migration. But in short, as we defined it, Lagosian at that time, those who can claim that their grandparents were born in Lagos, that was the qualification for the Lagosian under uh, the rule of the uh, major apology, Johnson, the first governor. It was during Johnson's tenure that Igomu Industrial Estate and the Southern Industrial Sector at Oregon were built. The administration launched an ambitious poultry program with over 100,000 birds 
and production of 4 million eggs annually. These boosted the supply of eggs to schools and hospitals in the state. In one year alone, over 56,000 day-old chicks were distributed to private farmers. Under Johnson, Lagos State made industrial investments in corporations such as the then Nigerian Beeries Limited, Guinness Nigeria Limited, Nikemtex Limited, Julius Berger Nigeria Limited, and Kappa and Delbato, to mention but a few. Mubalaji Johnson's administration took giant steps in provision of housing. The government built low-cost estates at Isolo and Suruliri, introduced a mortgage scheme where buyers pay through monthly installments and came up with an edict to check the skyrocketing costs of house rent, including the setting up of a tribunal where aggrieved tenants could go to seek redress. The regime established the Lagos State Development and Property Corporation, LSDPC, that constructed estates in different parts of the state. It developed Falomo and Adiniru Gusoya shopping complexes and played great roles in the development of the present-day Victoria Island. Mobalaji Johnson's government placed great emphasis on education, especially science education, by making it an important and effective instrument of progress. The sector, for many years, received the largest share of the state's budget allocation. Out of the two different educational systems inherited from the old colonial administration of the Western region and the one administered by the federal government for the Lagos Federal Capital Territory, the regime evolved a new system that boosted pre-primary, primary, and secondary education. It focused on new subjects such as modern mathematics, elementary science, and social studies. Through a four-year development plan, significant amount was injected into building new schools that led to increase in educational facilities. These include the construction of government colleges in the five divisions of the state, establishment of government model primary schools in Ikordu, Ekbe, Mushi, and Badagri, including domestic science centers, amongst others. Significant growth was also recorded in the area of teachers' innovation through the upgrading of grade 3 teachers' status to grade 2. It established the Advanced Teachers' College, the first school dedicated to training of teachers in addition to organizing continuous education program for them. There was also strong engagement of stakeholders to drive inclusive growth for the sector. Through the regime's 1970-1974 development plan for the Ministry of Health, it came up with a master plan by introducing an integrated health and medical service that led to a grassroots-driven healthcare delivery system. With emphasis on preventive over curative medicine, the regime established, consolidated, and expanded on key services like occupational health service, public health inspectorate, pharmaceutical inspectorate, health education, and epidemiological service. It created the school health service, built new hospitals, and renovated or expanded existing ones. The facilities in Lagos Island Maternity Hospital, reputed to be one of the busiest at the time, were improved upon. Here, the regime built an intensive child care unit and the blood transfusion laboratory. The facilities at the Massey Street Children's Hospital were revamped. Epe and Badagri General Hospitals were taken over from the old Western region and expanded while in-house catering service was introduced in the five general hospitals existing at the time. General Joseph was a servant leader, a man of incorruptible 
character. Your mother rests somewhere. How talented you might be, without the combination of character and simplicity, you have nothing. You're not just in. The School of General Nursing in General Hospital, Lagos, Community Nurses Training School, and the School of Midwifery at Lagos Island Maternity Hospital, including doctor's flats within the General Hospital in Marina and Hostel for nurses on Awolawa Road, Ikoi, were all upgraded and expanded. Under Johnson, the production capacity of Eju Waterworks was increased from 24 to 45 million gallons per day. Water supply was extended to Agege, Isheri, Ikeja, while the distribution mains to Lagos Island and Victoria Island were renewed. A 100,000 gallons per day water scheme was also built at Ekbe. The bid to promote sports led to the construction of Row Park Sporting Complex, Yaba, with facilities for various sporting activities, such as football field, swimming pool, basketball courts, and indoor games. Under Social Welfare Program, two units of the Social Welfare Services were established at Badagri and Ekbe. The Adoption Edict was enacted the family welfare unit was set up and remand homes constructed at Ikeja, Ekbe, and Badagri. The government of Mobology Johnson created Ministry of Information to manage the image of the state government and established the printing press, which is today the Lagos State Printing Corporation. The creation of the coat of arms and the Lagos official color was to the credit of the administration. It is also instructive to mention that the administration demolished a jealous symmetry, an action that drew wide criticism as a result of the disinterment of important personalities such as Samuel Ajayi Crowther, James Pinson Labulo Davis, Madame Tinubu, Thomas Babintin Macaulay, and many other famous leaders. Born in Lagos as the third child to the family of Joshua Motola Johnson and his wife, Bimisola Johnson, nee Koka, on the 9th of February, 1936, Mobolaji Olufunshaw Johnson attended Reagan Memorial Baptist School, Yaba, from 1941 to 1946. He moved to Yaba Methodist School in 1946 and was there till 1951. In September of the same year, he gained admission into Hartsey College, Worry, and moved in 1955 to Methodist Boys High School, Lagos, where he finished his secondary school in 1957. What he did have was discipline, honesty, integrity. I think and you know, hard work. One of his best sayings was like, you must always give it your best. Anything worth doing is worth doing well. Always, if you had a report card and your school teacher said you could do better, ah, that was the beginning of problem because it meant you're not putting your best. So that was the kind of person he was. And a very, very likable person, a very defendable person, a very friendly person with his friends and everything. As serious as he was, he was also a very, very sociable person. You know, he enjoyed life, he enjoyed people's company, all kinds of people's company, he enjoyed all kinds of music. He really had a very broad spectrum. And um, you probably heard when I gave my speech that he was a uh, son that um, was a true Nigerian. He really believed in the Nigerian, uh, Nigerian country. And um, whilst he was governor, of course, most of his colleagues were his uh, colleagues in the military. And um, I think by the age of 12, I'd been to virtually every state in Nigeria because he wanted us to learn and know everything about all, all parts of Nigeria. So he could not say, uh, you know in those days, ah, Iboni, Gambarini, all that was very alien culture. So these are the kind of things I think uh, the 
it may not be obvious in public record that I can add that this is the kind of person he really was. In 1959, Mubalaji attended the officer cadet training school in Teshi, Ghana. Because he emerged as the overall best trainee, he was sent to Morris Officer Cadet School in Aldershot, followed by the Royal Military Academy, Sandhurst, United Kingdom, between 1960 and 1961. On his return to Nigeria, the newly commissioned officer had swift postings, just as his promotion was also rapid. Lieutenant Mubalaji Johnson was posted to the 5th Battalion of the Nigerian Army in Kaduna, where he served in the United Nations operations in Congo Leo. Nine months later, he returned to Kaduna and attended the young officer's course there. After a month, he was posted back to Lagos as captain and served as administrative officer of the Federal Guards. He later rose to become the commander of the unit. This was followed by his posting as Deputy Assistant Adjutant and Quartermaster General of the Headquarters, 2nd Brigade in Apapa, Lagos, a position on which he was promoted as a major after passing the required examination. As a result of the first military coup on 15th of January 1966, Mobalaji's initial posting to Enugu was changed to 4th Battalion, 2nd Brigade in Ibadan, as second in command in February 1966. There, his enthusiasm and love for sports was manifested in the various competitions organized for officers of the battalion. He was then posted to Benin as the pioneer officer and station commander of the first military base in the Midwestern region. Shortly after, Mubalaji was recalled to Lagos to work directly with General Agui Ironsi in May 1966. The same month, he became the administrator of Lagos, the federal capital territory. He served in this capacity until 27th of May 1967 when he became the first military governor of the newly created Lagos state at the age of 31. He remained the governor until he was retired with immediate effect as a brigadier general following the coup of 29th July 1975. As the governor of the state, Mubalaji Johnson lived a Spartan life. Thus, he was one of the two state governors found not guilty of corruption by the three-man panel commissioned to investigate the various allegations of corruption amongst the state governors. He later served on the board of the Nigerian Conservation Foundation and Julius Berger Nigeria, PLC. He also served as the chairman, board of trustees, Methodist Boys High School. Mubalaji Johnson, who had many facilities named after him, nurtured Lagos State from infancy into a vibrant cosmopolitan and highly industrial city. His administration laid the foundation for the state's development, growth, and expansion through remarkable achievements. His death on 30th October 2019 is therefore a huge loss to Lagos State and indeed Nigeria. Adieu, Mobolaji Olufunsho Johnson. Brigadier General Mobolaji. Olufunsho Johnson, a great patriot, an accomplished administrator, one of the makers of modern Lagos, who sadly will never share this physical space with us again. In whatever role we know him, the first and the longest serving military administrator of Lagos State stood up as a special person for his leadership and charismatic personality. If anyone was qualified to be so addressed as an officer and a gentleman, it was General Mubolaji Olufonsho Johnson.
Despite his imposing frame, he was a, as gentle as a dove. He never threw his weight around. Even though he was a man of power, he was a man of authority, but he was never authoritarian. Though a soldier, he never ruled with an iron hand. He was compassionate. General Mubala Johnson was a gentleman in the true sense of the word. A prince among the soldiers. He had the common touch. This occasion, despite its sober nature, is an opportunity to sing the praise of this great negotiant, a true Omoiko Gongo. Thank him for his service to our dear state and to say a final bye to him. So it is my hope that this today's event will help us to reframe our resolve to pursue a journey to a greater Lagos that he envisioned and administration is committed to delivering.